Hi, this is a very small video about something called dependency injection that uh, can be used in JavaFX. This is a small detail which can be interesting for some and confusing for others. So if you're just starting out and having a bit of problems, maybe consider uh, doing some, some getting more in experience before uh, looking into this video. But this is basically solving a problem that I created in my other videos about uh, everything being public. So what you've seen in the other videos is that I can actually uh, do stuff with, um, if I click, uh, write something here, I can change the other elements here. And what you can see is my label here in my controller is public, my text input is public, and my method is public. And the reason why these needs to be public is because um, when JavaFX needs to call these uh, dynamically, it knows about them from in here. So, for example, click button knows about uh, the one called click button in here because it is public in here. But these are not in the same, um, the JavaFX is definitely not in the same package and not the same class or anything. So if I make them private, I will break everything. But I really want to make them private and let me explain why. So there is a general rule in Java that something like these instance arrivals here, like label and text input, these should be private because these are instance arrivals. And by making them public, we're exposing them to other classes. Actually, when they're public, everyone can change them. So we could have another class kind of fiddling with the label here and doing weird stuff with it. And, and it kind of breaks some good design principles. So in this video, I want to show you a way that we can avoid that, which I think is best practice also for JavaFX. And it has to do with an annotation called FXML annotation. So we can do something called an annotation, which will help with this uh, dependency injection thing. So let me show you. So first off, let's try to do it with this uh, event here, this event method. So this event method is called uh, from the uh, JavaFX runtime environment at some point when I click the button. And right now it can easily find it because it's public. But I want it to be private. So uh, if I do that, um, I get an error when I run my program because uh, it cannot run the program because it cannot find the click button because it expects because when it's private it's not actually exposed so I get this kind of long uh, really annoying uh, error here but there is some way we can do that there is a built-in for JavaFX there's an annotation called FXML like that and if we use this annotation we need to import the class we can do that easily, just Alt and Enter. That will just import it from the FXML library. If we do that, it annotates that this should be available to the FXML uh, framework. So it actually means that although it's private, it's not private when calling it from FXML. So it actually kind of creates uh, saying that this library here, the FXML library, can access this, but no one else can. Of course, we can access it from the same class because it's private, but no one from the outside will be able to do that, and it will still work. So if I run it now, the program still works, and the button works as it did before, no problems. So I would definitely recommend that you always do this. So when you're working with JavaFX, make everything private as you're supposed to do. And again, we have the same problems with these, these two here, because now it's not working. So if we want these, again, we just annotate them with FXML, just above like this. Sorry, <laughs> like that, and um, now everything is gets injected nicely and works and everything. 
this back to normal. So I would definitely recommend that you that you use this annotation instead of just making everything problem public. It has the advantage that no one can actually, if I go to some other class, like let's go in here and say controller. create a new controller just to test this out and before I would be able to let's make one of these public anyone from the outside like here could do controller dot label and then access everything within the label which is not very good practice to do but by making it private no one accidentally tries to do that it will say label so it says it's a problem and if we click here we can say either we need to create it in here or uh, we need to make it uh, protected public something like that we need to do something right to, to change the visibility of that so this way we protect our controller from outside modification, which is very good uh, and normal Java practice. And we use the annotation. It's a bit annoying, of course. You have to write FXML on everything that you need to be available to the FXML framework. But I think it's, uh, it's really worth it uh, in the end. You don't need to do it with anything that if you create some other like private int counter or something if you have something that counts something for example it could be the amount of clicks so we could say the counter plus plus here and we could do something like we could add it here so that every time we we click the button it actually counts up right but you don't need to make something like that available to FXML because it's not something that part of the FXML file. So you don't need to that make that available. So normal instance variables, you just keep them normally private or whatever you need. Um, but only for these uh, special ones that you're using that the FXML framework needs to actually access, you need to do it with those. So that's basically it for this video, just a small extra one on the problems with having uh, public fields like that.